All right, Mr. Sir, I, let's begin. If it's okay with you, I would like to welcome those of uh, you that were able to join us live this evening and the, uh, the, 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 the folks that will be watching this uh, later this evening uh, and in the days and weeks to come. I'm uh, Bob Mahalik. I'm the superintendent of schools, the Crestwood School District, joined here today by our business manager, Mr. Peter Bard, and our um, director of your programs, as well as our elementary principal for the Fairview School, uh, Mr. Kevin Sayre. Mr. Kevin Sayre has really done a lot of the legwork on this, and, and to that we must, uh, you know, really commend him for all his efforts, making sure that the funds that we have uh, attributed to us uh, are used appropriately uh, and that everything that we do meets the <clears throat> requirements of the mandate uh, that the Department of Education has, uh, has directed us to do. So again, a, a very, very big thank you to Mr. Sayre who, who has really been an instrument this entire time uh, with uh, ESSERS 1, 2, and now uh, with, with these very important funds. So again, with that, I thank everyone that could be here uh, live. And for those watching, uh, please know if you have any questions, you would like to contribute anything to this, and we're not allowed or we're not able to uh, be here live, please just reach out to myself, reach out to Mr. Sayre, Mr. Bard. We are here to work as a team and to do the very best we can as we move forward uh, post-pandemic. So, with that, Mr. Sir, I will uh, I will give the uh, give the floor to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mahalik. And as Mr. Mahalik said, we're going to uh, be recording this. This will be posted to our website. But this is just one layer in our communication. And as I go through this, you'll understand why we added this layer, uh, this town hall format. But it's my pleasure to, to provide this information to you. I always like to start with a purpose, and not only do I like to start with a purpose, I like to give my guests uh, a, a little roadmap. We're looking at about 15 minutes of me presenting. The purpose of that presentation is to inform and to educate. We're talking about federal dollars that come into the Crestwood School District because we obviously have a large country, a large state. This funnel comes in this way, and uh, there's a lot of rules because they're trying to create rules that are general enough to meet all 500 schools in the Commonwealth. I try to apply this to you, the Crestwood uh, stakeholder, to make sense of it at our level, because what works for Crestwood is quite different than what uh, works for Philadelphia or Hazleton or Forest City. So I try to make this specific to Crestwood, but understand why we have to follow these guidelines. The other purpose of this Town Hall is to connect with all, as many stakeholders as we can through different modalities. And lastly, we wanna seek input. This Town Hall was, was chosen because literally at, at, at the end of this, we're just gonna open the floor and if people have questions, we're gonna have a dialogue. And we're able to have that dialogue virtually if there's one thing the pandemic taught us is we can be effective communicating in this format. So I'm gonna go through actually six funding streams Three are very familiar. I've, I've shared these funding streams previously. These are referred to as Title I, Title II, and Title IV. And then we're gonna look at the money that's based on the pandemic, uh, commonly referred to as ESSER, uh, but it, there's a lot of acronyms there. We're gonna try to demystify all this, make sense of it, and keep it simple. All right, so as I said, we're gonna start off with Title I, Title II, and Title IV. So, these are federal programs. The, the names that they give to them are, are just, think of them as a, as a coding system. It's the way that the government keeps track of its money. It doesn't really have meaning to you, so I want to give it some meaning. Crestwood School District is a targeted assistance program at our Fairview and our Rice campus. That means that we take these monies and we use them, you can use them one of two ways, as a targeted or as a whole school. We don't qualify to do school-wide, as they call it. We qualify for targeted. I'll explain what that means. That means we hit a target. Instead of doing K to six in Rice and Fairview, we go and look at just kindergarten through third grade. And we further target it for reading. So you may say, well, why do you do that? And again, I want to explain how this money works for Crestwood. We have a finite amount of money. We only have a certain pool of money. So if we try to spread it out too wide, it becomes ineffective. That's why we chose this narrower target. 
it's commensurate with the amount of money that we receive. If we try to do too much service, we'll be ineffective. So we have to have a criteria for service when we do this. It's mandated that you follow data, meaning you have to use information regarding your students. We can't just apply this service to everybody. As I said, we're targeted. So we have processes for that. We have excellent tried and true processes. Uh, unfortunately, our new way of doing things got interrupted by the pandemic in March of 2020. That was actually turning out to be an exciting year. That would have been the fourth year of our processes that I'm sharing with you here through our Wonders resource, utilizing a process that we locally call the Wonder Wheel. So essentially what I'm trying to say is our, our, our study got interrupted. So we have to regroup now and pick a new target year. My target year off the cuff won't be this year, it'll be the following year uh, because we wanna, we, we need to work through the interruption that was caused by the pandemic. A lot of rules, as I told you before. You as parents have right to know, so I send a letter home at the beginning of every year. We're communicating with you the qualifications of our teachers, that you have the right to understand our qualifications. This is a great example. Crestwood has all highly qualified teachers. However, there are school districts in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that unfortunately can't employ all highly qualified teachers. So you as parents have a right to know that. So while this rule, people in Crestwood would kind of shake their head at and say, well, that's silly. Of course, they're all highly qualified. It's not always typical. This is how that rule relates to us. Mr. Sir, if you would, can you uh, give us the definition of highly qualified? What, what does that mean that they're highly qualified? They hold the proper certification to be teaching what, uh, what it is they're assigned to teach. Uh, unfortunately, there is some teacher shortage issues. And again, you also have to think of this in school-wide programs. These programs could be K to 12. So you could have a science teacher in your secondary campus without the proper certification in certain, in certain school districts. But again, in the context of Crestwood School District and Targeted, we're only looking at our K to three population. Uh, this is an equity plan. Again, rules that come with federal money. You do not want to have your least experienced teachers teaching your most difficult uh, classes, the, the, the students that are posing the greatest challenge, the students that are in the most need of assistance. So this equity plan lays out who is teaching whom. And again, at Crestwood School District, we have a very veteran staff. You can see in the last equity plan we did, we had one teacher at Rice Elementary who was considered inexperienced. That means that the teacher has been teaching for less than three years. As I said, 100% highly qualified. Part of what we do in Title I on the LEA level, that means on the district level, is we have to develop a policy. We have a district policy that was approved by the Board of Education. It gets reviewed every so often. It spells out how we have a relationship with our parents. At the building levels, there's also a Rice policy and a Fairview policy, and there's also a compact. A compact is an agreement. This is how the school promises that they're gonna provide service, and this is what the parents promise that they're gonna do along with their children. These are, again, rules put in place through the federal government, passed down through Pennsylvania Department of Education because they believe this is best practice and how you get the best possible outcome. What I'm showing you is these are how these rules relate to us in the Crestwood School District. Shifting now to Title II, uh, quick footnote before I do move on. Our Title I funding this year was increased from previous years. Last year, we got approximately $380,000. This year, we got approximately $500,000. What we do with that money is purchase human resources or uh, subsidize our human resource. What does that mean? We pay for our Title I teachers. That money is what uh, pays for their salaries, their benefits. Uh, last year and, and every year that I've ever been federal programs coordinator, Crestwood School District literally didn't receive enough money to fully cover the cost of the four employees that we have working between the two buildings, the four professional employees. This year we have enough money to come just this close to paying uh, fully for these employees. So Title I funding, 
Uh, that's, that's the story and the rules and uh, the context of Crestwood. So Title II, supporting effective instruction. In this area, we, this year we received approximately $89,000. Back in 2015-16, and this statistic is still true today, 52% of schools used the majority of this money for professional development. However, we at Crestwood do not. We use this to work on our student to teacher ratio. I share these facts with you so you understand that for Crestwood, for us to spend $90,000 in professional development would be a stretch. Our teachers, again, are veteran. They're trained by administrators. We work together in professional learning communities. It's not a good fit for our money, at least administratively, we don't recommend that we spend $90,000 from our Title II funds this year for professional development. So a student to teacher ratio refers to, we target a teacher in a class or a grade level that needs to have that student to teacher ratio lower to afford the best possible service. We know from research that if we can bring that number down from 25 students to one teachers to 20 to one in a grade, we can be more successful because we can provide more service. So we use our Title II funds for student teacher ratio, or it's also called class size reduction. So again, I have to work through an equity plan and making, make sure that our Title II money and these teachers that we're identifying are highly qualified and we're not using inexperienced teachers and again, we pass with flying colors. Now try to just imagine a larger school district that does school-wide that has a lot of teacher turnover. This worksheet's a lot more complex. Crestwood, not so complex. There is something called Title III, it's language instruction for English language learners. We do not receive enough funds in order to, to manage this on our own. We're in a consortium with the Luzerne Intermediate Unit 18 who provides this service for us. Title IV. Now, this is an important title because this is the one where it is important as Crestwood School District that before we submit our application that we ask our public their opinion on how we spend this money. Again, to frame it for Crestwood School District. We receive less than $30,000. That's an important number because if you get more than $30,000, in Title IV, which I call the duct tape title because you can use it for a lot of purposes, you'd have to spend it on well-rounded education. You'd have to spend it on safe and healthy schools or students. You'd have to spend it on an effective use of technology. But because we've always got less than $30,000, we're allowed to pick just one initiative. So what we did is we used it for safe and healthy students. Two pictures in there show you what we use it for. The Crestwood School District uses it, uses it to fund the Crestwood School District Police. We have a Crestwood School District Chief of Police. Recently, we've had turnover. Uh, Kevin Sheetrum, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, I've been working on it, is the Crestwood School District Chief of Police. And the monies that we receive through Title IV offset his salary. Does not pay the entire salary, it offsets the salary. And we're allowed to continue to utilize our monies to pay for this because when Title IV first started, we did not have a Crestwood School District Police Force. The two of those things happened commensurate the same year. So we've used these funds each year to offset the costs so we're allowed to continue. But it's important that we, we get across to, to our stakeholders that there are other options. And if anyone has suggestions for consideration or you think there's a better way to spend these monies, we certainly will listen and consider because sometimes good ideas, we don't have all of them. We don't have a copyright on good ideas. So we love to hear from our stakeholders and get opinions. That includes our faculty, our support staff, other administrators, parents, uh, and tax paying citizens. So the reason that we've shifted to the town hall is the next phase. We went through the three uh, titles, but now we're at the, the federal money that is available to Crestwood School District based on the pandemic. The money came from the federal government and has a name at that level and then goes through the state. The state distributes the money and it gets another name at that level. So if you hear a bunch of different names and a bunch of different acronyms, understand you have the federal name for the money, then you have the state level name for the money, but for the most part, people have just been calling this ESSER 1, ESSER 2, 
ESSER 3 ARC. What does that mean? Before I tell you what it means, I just want to again remind you of our purpose. We're sharing this information, but we want to hear any thoughts our stakeholders may have. Now, as Mr. Mahalik said, our attendance th this evening isn't great, but this is being recorded and you certainly can communicate through email or maybe at a subsequent uh, Crestwood School District board meeting. Second reason and, 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 the, and the real driving force behind why I thought a town hall was a good idea, it says right in the rules. If you go to about the third, second sentence, the past year and challenges of the next make stakeholder engagement critical for a full and productive return to in-person learning and effective and equitable use of our ESSER funds. So of the three different funding streams, the last one, the American Rescue Plan, which is the largest one, stipulates school districts, get out there and tell families that you've received this money from the federal government through the, distributed by the state, and this is what you're going to do with it. So just a quick review. We've already received two streams of money under the title of ESSER, which is Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Act. The first one, which came out of what was called the CARES Act in March of 2020. That was the immediate money because they saw that there was a problem. Crestwood School District's share of that money was 221,000 and change. Federal government had a second act in January, just January of this last year, called the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations. Just to simply explain it, basically they said, here's a little more, or here's a good deal more. Crestwood's share of that was $1,439,000 and change. Obviously, sounds like a lot of money. Shortly, I'm gonna frame that for you. The last stream of money, or the most recent stream of money, I should say, because it may not be the last, is the American Rescue Plan Recovery Package, also known as ARP A, uh, ARP ESSER, or ESSER 3. Now look at that timeline. You have March 13th of 2020. You can go back in time. So things that you've already spent money on can qualify. And you can go all the way out to September 24th, 2024 to spend the $2,910,000 and change. Now these are all, that, that's not accumulating. These are all three separate funds. Now I just wanna give you a quick perspective. Sounds like a lot of money. For Crestwood School District, this is less than 10% of our budget. Still nice. If someone says to you, you're going to get about a 9% raise this next year, you'd say 9% sounds good. However, your neighbor, and this is a true story, I won't name the school, but our neighbor got 35%. 35% of their budget has just arrived in these slides. So imagine you got a 35% raise. Now that you know, close to 9% raise isn't sounding as good. So I say that to you as, as we frame this and we think strategically about how we're gonna spend our money. So how have we spent some of the money thus far? This is going back now to ESSER 1 and ESSER 2. We bought Promethean televisions. We saw this as a, an immediate big need and it was an allow, what's called an allowable cost. So within our elementary schools and soon to be in our other schools, you'll see additional Promethean TVs. PPE obviously was necessary. We had to go out and make purchases that were not planned. And that was really the purpose of the first uh, set of money, the, the ESSER one, the $220,000 PPE was a, was a big piece of that. And the third is we wanted to maintain our faculty and staff. Again, the context of Crestwood School District, we maintained a continuity of education. We maintained live instruction every day. Our teachers were teaching every day in a live format, regardless of our context. Because I pay attention to such things, I know that we are actually in rarefied air in terms of schools that were closed but still maintained live instruction. And the only way to do that was to maintain our faculty and staff. 
that arrives us at the last money. I threw, uh, these are six of the headings. Now underneath those six headings are a bunch of subpoints. There's a lot of ways to spend this third round of money. And keep in mind, they've given us a long time to do it. So thus far, as an administrative team, we've suggested that the Board of Education, Mr. Mahalik, consider the following expenditures. A social worker, an additional special education teacher, and number three, I call planning to plan. At this point, we do not know the full extent of the impact of the pandemic on the Crestwood School District specific to the students, specific to them academically. I personally, and, and I always recommend this, I, I recommend a slow, steady, very strategic approach. We, they purposely intentionally gave us a lot of time to spend this money. So let's be thoughtful. Let's collect and analyze data. Let's make informed decisions and then continue to spend this money. The social worker and the special education teachers are immediate obvious needs, especially the social worker. We had discussion about this prior to the pandemic. Now it's just a slam dunk obvious. We need to take care of the social and emotional welfare of our students and families. Uh, so this, this overview I'm concluding, I, I hope I hit the 15 minute mark, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but this is when I'd like to open it up for discussion. Before we do, Mr. Mahalik's email is on there. My email is on there. Uh, Crestwood website, our phone numbers are there. Any and all suggestions or any and all questions, we are certainly glad to answer. The more informed our stakeholders are, the more invested they are in what happens at Crestwood School District, we know is uh, commensurate with our success. So we welcome it. Uh, that was one of our purposes for this evening is to understand uh, and gather your input. With that being said, with our attendees here this evening, would anyone like to ask a question, ask for clarification, or make a suggestion? Kevin, can I ask a question really quick? Absolutely. What's an example of the family and community partnership? Are you referring to how to spend ARP money? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're talking about the third largest. Uh, there are, again, understand the context of, of certain school districts. Mm -hmm. We have very active PTAs. We have very active mm -hmm. families. There are schools within the Commonwealth and within the country that they know there's, there's a disconnect for, and it could be for a lot of different reasons. So this money can be used intentionally to enhance those relationships. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't consider it. Could we do better? Could, could, could a group and, and Mrs. Rosicki, you know, representing the teachers, you certainly could have had a thought that, you know, we, we could do a better job meeting with our, our families, bringing them into the fold, especially when we're trying to overcome any educational loss. So it's a consideration. Well, uh, some districts, and again, as Mr. Sears said, something for us to consider uh, mm -hmm. has, you know, family trainings, you know, workshops for families on how to assist their children, maybe doing homework, how to assist their children with, with different things that, you know, are, are taking place in the school. And so that's something that, again, we, we can consider uh, to, to um, you know, to bridge whatever gaps we may have uh, between the, the schools and, and our families. So a I lot think, of options that fit in that, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's an excellent question. I feel like that's broad. I feel like that mm -hmm. can be a lot, of, a lot of things. It could be job shadowing with students and... I think it's intentionally broad because, yeah, you know, as Kevin had said in his opening statement, very large country very large state actually as well and now we got to you know get get you know 499 school districts you know one mandate how does that come together so not all school districts you know we do have a very very strong 
I believe, tie between uh, the school and our community. Mm -hmm. I left school tonight. I saw several hundred of our community members coming in, participating in the children's produce market. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who's there but, you know, 40 to 50 volunteers all from the school helping assist with the community. You know, each and every day doing our lunches. Uh, you know, things like that, lunches for, you know, our, our students. Um, so, you know, events like that is exactly what uh, this could go to. In our case, again, we are doing so many of those activities now, but could always be an opportunity to do more. One of the things that I was uh, remiss in not saying is the third fund, 20% of that money, which is $600,000, a little less, must be spent on learning loss. So that has a more prescriptive uh, set of rules for how it is spent. And again, that's, the, the, that's the, the monies that I really think Crestwood School District has to be most strategic. We have to use a strategic thinking process informed by data uh, and embraced by our stakeholders to, to, to do the best we can. We owe it to everyone to use that money effectively. That's why we didn't run out and uh, spend it as fast as possible. Other questions? Hi, this is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Uh, so the 2.9 million, how much of that has already been spent? And then how much do you have? And are you going to spread it all the way to 2024? None of it has been spent thus far. Oh. Uh, there, there is consideration. And well, let me answer an easy one. Yes, some of it will be spread out to 2024. The money does not land in Crestwood's account in one big $2.9 million dollar uh, it's, it's also dispersed to us on a schedule. Uh, so there, again, in, in, in the spirit of trying to explain the rules and, and how this works, and that is actually one area, and I don't want to misspeak, so I, I don't know the pace in which the money comes into the account. I just know that it comes in, in chunks. I believe it's, it's ten, 10 installments uh, that, that they'll provide us the monies with. So yeah, it's as Mr. Sarah said, not one big deposit. Um, and everything that does come in, again, is, is going to be, and, and rightly so, is going to be closely monitored. And everything we said we are going to spend uh, on using these funds, we must be able to back that up. Uh, um, and there, uh, you know, the abilities to, to revise and amend uh, if, if a need should arise that we're not thinking about today or next week, next month. Uh, but uh, there will um, you know, be a tremendous amount of scrutiny from the state level on every school district on how these funds are being used and to make certain that they're being used appropriately because that learning loss is, you know, is, is real. And the only way we're going to close what has, you know, what, what has gapped because of the pandemic is through some special programming and, and some you know, some real special initiatives and that's what we're aiming for. Okay. So for instance, the social worker, the concept there is to pay the salary and benefits for this year and the next two. And, and this fund affords us uh, that ability to do that. So after that point, it will be Crestwood School District's responsibility to budget. And when you were saying before this year, do you mean this year as in the year coming or the year that already happened? I think you're asking the money, you can spend it retroactively back to March of 2020. Is that what you were asking? No. Okay. Um, earlier you were referring to this is how uh, that we got an increase this year from last year so you say this year do you mean 2021 or 21 22 21 22 uh and you're referring to title money so title one yes. increased uh from three hundred eighty thousand dollars to approximately five hundred thousand dollars title two increased 
but uh, it, by a small amount, uh, maybe ten thousand dollars. It might have been seventy nine thousand dollars the year before. Went to eighty nine thousand, and Title IV increased from approximately twenty one thousand dollars to twenty nine thousand dollars. So I don't mean to make light of you know sixteen seventeen thousand dollars, but for Title II and Title IV, that's what it, it amounted to. Title I was significant. That's a that's a nice bump for our Title I fund. And then the community input you want has to do with this, the uh, American Rescue Plan Act. Correct. Uh, it's, it's community input, stakeholder engagement, synonymous for we have to do a good job advertising and communicating. It doesn't mean that we're employing the full democratic process. At the end of the day, they expect the Crestwood School District leadership team uh, to, to make the best possible decisions because choices can be infinite and we know that sometimes you can never truly get to consensus. But it's important that we hear uh, from the community, have you considered this is where we see the need based on the choices. And then the Title IV monies are the same way. Actually, the Title IV monies and the, and the ARP monies are very similar in nature into how you can spend them. Uh, both are very duct tape-esque. A lot of, lot of uses, a lot of purposes. You just have to follow the rules. And maybe you could do some kind of survey once you've narrowed down different ways to spend and to get an idea of what people would prefer. I mean, I know it's very broad, so. And sometimes the surveys can look um, different. They don't have to, they, they can just be needs-based surveys, not necessarily tied to money, but what a people right. in the school district see as needs uh, to, to, to better our, our educational offerings. And do you see, uh, Mr. Mahalik, the fall looking like normal five days a week? Yes, Nicole, I, I would have no reason right now to believe it will be anything less than five days a week, full days. Uh, we do know, and, and we're getting each day, you know, kids that would like to stay in cyber. And uh, we're enrolling the Crestwood Cyber um, Academy, and we're very, very proud of that. Uh, kids had a tremendous experience, some. Uh, and, and those that wish to stay on are going to be able to stay on in a cyber. Uh, but I think that is more of, as I'm talking to families now, more of that the kids just really found a way that, that they're able to, uh, you know, to, to really meet their needs. Um, and, and it's not that people are fearing uh, anything with, with COVID, at least not right now who I'm speaking to. Um, you know, the only thing, Nicole, that we're not sure of, and I'm getting questions from people, is is the mask mandate. Um, I know everywhere you go, people are very, very lax with that, and I understand. I respect that. But we do not know what that means for our students who are not vaccinated. And there, are, you know, still are a lot, a lot of students, elementary age, who are not vaccinated. So that would be the only question, Nicole, is will masks still be mandated for elementary students? Uh, or those who are not vaccinated. Um, but beside that, I envision five days a week, full days, uh, and, uh, you know, just business as usual. And, and boy, we're really looking forward to that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. As we said before, this is being recorded. It'll be on our... Uh, Crestwood School District YouTube, and uh, this will be one, one step in our communication plan. Uh, there'll be other instances in which more information will be forthcoming. If there are no other questions, really appreciate our attendees being here. Thank you so much for giving of your time. And yeah, Mr. Sheriff, I may again conclude with uh, thank you uh, because you really put this in, into a, you know, into a manner that, even, you know, even those of us who have been in education, federal program is very, very confusing to some. 
um, but you put it in a manner that was explainable uh, and able to follow it. And I, I can tell you, I appreciate that. And I know I can probably speak uh, on behalf of many, many people uh, the, the way your presentation was. So to those that were able to join us today, thank you again. And, and for those who, who could not, we understand. Beautiful night, a lot of things going on. We are available to you. Watch this on YouTube. Watch this on Facebook. Uh, I believe this will even be on uh, our website. Uh, any questions, please reach out to us. Um, and uh, we just wish everyone a really wonderful, uh, enjoyable summer. Thank you, Kevin, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Thank night. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a great Bye. evening.